Driving in the Philippines, laws and some questions for those of you who have experience in various parts of uh, the Philippines. Number one, with the Philippine driver's license. Uh, number two, with, with driving. The roads around the various islands and provinces uh, vary a lot. You've got freeways uh, up in the uh, Manila area, Luzon area. You've got various other islands that have a little bit of a, well, a better, a better road network than other islands, put it that way. Um, Iloilo City, for instance, is laid out uh, much better than some cities. They, they had land available and, and they put the road system in when they could. Uh, whether, whether they were really smart about that or whether they were just lucky with it, uh, as, as some, someone mentioned in a comment one time. Anyway, you're going to find uh, many variations depending on where you're driving. Also, with uh, driver's licenses and, and how the various things are, uh, rules and regulations are enforced here, I think. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my various experiences, and I'm going to take you along. This is, uh, I'm riding my motorbike, and I'm going from uptown Cebu City, uh, and I'm driving up to, up north of Cebu City, about an hour and a half, up to Carmen, where Cebu Safari is, big zoo type area up there that I've done a previous video about and uh, about an hour and a half drive to go I don't know 40 40 to 50 kilometers something like that I'm not sure I'm not convinced the odometer on my motorbike is is accurate Google says it's 50 kilometers my odometer said it was 40 so not quite sure what the actual number is we're going to go from Cebu City to Mandawi City to Liloan uh, to Compostela and Concepcion, I believe, uh, Danao City, and then Carmen after that, I believe, is the way they go. At some point in time, before this whole video is over, I'm probably going to cover all the topics that I wanted to cover. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go off and tell you just a little bit about uh, my medical experience, a little bit about the changes in weather we're going to see here real soon, um, and a couple other things. But I think I'm going to finish talking before the end of this video. So I'm going to leave uh, the whole video up, which is longer than, than an hour, for those of you who just want to uh, watch the, the trip up there. And I did not, did not video uh, tape 100% of that, but I'm using a... The GoPro 9 Black uh, really does a good job at st image stabilization. Got a condom, new condominium is way delayed there on the left. Land Traders, I think, is, and, and off to the right, you've got Summit Galleria Hotel right next to um, Robinson's, Gal uh, Robinson's relatively new Galleria Mall, just right next to it there. And Robinson's Galleria also has, uh, I think, about three new towers. They're not all occupied yet. They're not all, all finished. I think one tower maybe. Uh, just to the right there, you can't see it, but uh, three towers. And I've done videos there, done videos of dozens and dozens of other condominiums in Cebu City. A couple over, over on Ilo, Ilo City, uh, some number of subdivisions. Um, been over to Bohol a number of times, uh, videos, travel videos, cost of living videos, uh, travel videos. Uh, so check out my, uh, my other videos, consider subscribing, and if you do the thumbs up or even thumbs down if you don't appreciate it, uh, that always helps as well. Straight ahead there was the, the piers, the number of piers, uh, pier one, pier two, pier three, as we go down this way, you see the trucks, all those trucks are going to go down, either put their their freight on a ferry or ship and or drive put their vehicle on one of those and, and uh, take their goods to another island first question is your foreign driver's license good here in the Philippines my understanding is that your foreign license is good for 90 days after you arrive here after that you uh, are supposed to get a Philippine driver's license now, a number of years ago, they made it more difficult uh, to get a foreign license. Uh, my understanding was that, uh, this was probably four or five years ago, was that uh, you were supposed to have a, 
a visa which was good for longer than one year or at least one year to qualify because they didn't want to be issuing driver's licenses people that were going to just be here for a few months six months uh, that type of thing um, so anyway my understanding uh, that's my understanding and I was denied three different times I went in and, and attempted to uh, get a driver's license and I, I was basically told that I didn't have a proper amount of time on my driver's license. I've heard other people say, if you've been here over a year, um, that might qualify, and, and that wasn't my experience. I was able to get a, a work visa, so then I was able to get the, uh, the driver's license, and uh, so that's my situation. I've been told by a number of people that once you get out of the, the cities, out into the provinces, it's easier to get a Philippine driver's license. Um, I don't know. Didn't didn't try try to do that, but I've heard that from a number of people, and I've heard that uh, from a number of people about various licenses, business licenses, and various other things as well. Once you get out of the the bigger cities, uh, the the process can become. But there again, it's going to depend upon uh, the town, the province, uh, the political structure there, I guess. Now, I've seen comments, uh, two different things. Uh, quite a while back, I had somebody comment that if you, even if you have a Philippine driver's license, you are required to have the international driver's license as well. And I have not been able to find any information uh, confirming that. I don't believe that is true. I know a number of people who have the international driver's license. Uh, I've had other people tell me that the international driver's license isn't much more than than an ID. Some countries recognize it, some don't. Um, and as, as, as one or two uh, expats have told me, well, at, at least it's, it's an extra form of saying, look, I've got, a, I've got my foreign driver's license plus the international driver's license. Do the, do the local enforcement officers uh, understand much, much <laughs> Any of the details about that, I don't know. Another question I occasionally get is, is your uh, foreign driver's license good for a motorbike here? Well, does it have the uh, motorbike uh, endorsement on it? And if it doesn't, then uh, it's probably not uh, not good here. Now, I've, had, I've rented a number of motorbikes here, and in one case, there was no paperwork involved at all. I, I paid the guy, and had the motorbike for the day basically paid them I think 400 pesos big building to the left there's UC uh, Medical Center in Mandawi City we've crossed over to, to Mandawi City from Cebu City and the next hospital over to the left can't quite see it is Chungwa Hospital Mandawi relatively new hospital um, got Park Mall up here a few blocks on the left which is a little older uh, a little bit older uh, mall, but in several cases, they uh, that where I rented uh, motorbikes, they did check make sure I had the motorbike endorsement as well, which I have. That big building uh, right center is the Bai Hotel. I believe that's the the largest hotel room wise outside of Metro Manila. I believe over 600 rooms in there. Number of restaurants, pretty good buffet in there. And over to the left, you can't see it, but uh, they will be building a big casino uh, resort hotel system there, is my understanding. And the big open lot just to the left there, again, you can't see it, I think is a, they're going to build a, uh, several low, uh, low cost housing for the very, very poor. So anyway, if you don't have a motorbike endorsement, you're, you're taking some risk uh, some places aren't going to bother you. Some tourist areas are just going to rent it to you. Other other places will require you to have that. They won't rent it to you. Uh, really up to you whether you want to take that risk uh, or not. Having having the bike uh, hitting a checkpoint, uh, having the bike uh, confiscated, or getting a citation or something like that. Several years ago, I had a friend, uh, Australian friend asked me if I want to go with him and his buddies take a motorbike trip in Vietnam and that sounded pretty interesting and uh, I said well do you need a 
you need to read Mies license what are the details he says don't worry about it uh, you can <laughs> if you get stopped and the, they're going to give you a citation you just uh, pay them the fine whatever the fine is there and you go about, about your business not sure if that's fact or fiction he had been there before and he had uh, experienced that I guess is insurance available if you uh, rent a vehicle, a motorbike, or, or a car here? And they do have car rental places at the airport. Um, you can uh, you can order them online. And uh, I've been told, like, if you want a car, uh, do it a couple of days in advance because uh, it's not like in the U.S. You can order one today and go pick it up within an hour or so, I guess, in many places. Per perhaps you can in, in Manila, Makati, various areas. Not sure about that. There again, anybody with experience in those areas, uh, please let us know what your experience is. Um, renting motorbikes, I have never had any place offer offer me any insurance. No, I have a motorbike here for, gosh, about a year, I guess. And uh, I've got liability insurance. My liability insurance costs me 500 pesos for one year. And looks like it's reasonably good insurance. Uh, a friend of mine had a scooter uh, until he, he sold it, and he said he had comprehensive insurance, which was pretty good, he said, for just under 5,000 pesos, about 100 U.S. dollars. Another quest obvious question is, if, if you have an accident and injure yourself, your liability insurance is not going to cover you. Will your health insurance cover you, especially if you don't have a motorbike driver's license? Important factors to consider. I have heard stories, if, if you do some damage uh, to other vehicles, uh, I've heard a number of stories where they've had relatively minor minor accidents and uh, you agree on the spot uh, to just pay a certain person or the other person certain damages and then you both go on your way. Um, so I've heard that not, not only here but in China where I visited, gosh, what, 18, 19 years ago. Uh, that, that you can do that. In fact, a group of people might demand <laughs> in China, might surround the, the area, and they might be be uh, judge and jury and uh, demand, hey, you need to pay this person this much money for the damages. Not sure if that happens here or not. Traffic laws and enforcement. Now, I'm not going to... Uh, go down and give you a driver's uh, course here on all the laws and uh, maybe I should do that sometime go, go through the uh, traffic manual driving manual and talk about some of that stuff but as you can see if you've been watching the video at all <laughs> lane lines are barely a suggestion and uh, I don't know a lot of people I don't know what percentage it is it will depend upon what province you're in what island you're on uh, people who've never had any driver's training, don't really know what, what any of the rules are, uh, don't have a driver's license, may not even have a registered vehicle. And uh, so it's kind of like the wild, wild west. And I tell you, I've, I've become more comfortable riding a motorbike here, but still very uncomfortable in, in, as, as you get into rush hour traffic and you're almost touching knees with people on both sides of you on motorbikes and uh, you know if there's an inch they'll they'll take it uh, so enforcement no Cebu City and I think Mandawi City is has hired a couple hundred extra traffic enforcers in the last couple of years um, they're not out in cars uh, with their sirens pulling people over their their people stand on the side of the various streets and they'll flag different people over, oftentimes motorbikes, even four-wheel vehicles and, and trucks, and check to see if, check their documents. Do you, have, do you have a license? Do you have registration? And that type of thing. Uh, so I've talked to some standing on the corner over in Lapu-Lapu, Mactan Island, uh, said, what are, you, what are you looking for? Where are you stopping? And they said, well, we're, we're checking to see if anybody is going through red lights, uh, various things like that and then we'll pull some of them over uh, talk to some people gosh where was I up in Ubai North Bahol Island a uh, month or so ago and and, and asked them the couple guys stand out there what 
what type of citations are you giving out? And the guy said, well, yeah, traffic laws, uh, just in general, uh, no helmet, no registration, no license. Uh, and yet, gosh, I think 80% of the people or more were not wearing helmets and, uh, as, and even driving by as we were talking. So e even there, um, I can tell you, once you get out of the, the big city, even just a little ways, uh, the use of helmets by motor scooter, motorbike riders uh, becomes very small, depending on. Now, a number of months ago, and I think Behold, different parts of Behold had a big crackdown, and they were, uh, I think they were confiscating bikes, a uh, big brouhaha about that, uh, about helmets and uh, various other things. A lot, of, a lot of people were losing their bikes because they didn't have re proper registration, up-to-date registration. Speeding, uh, uh, you know, there are there there are speed limits, but pretty much never enforced. Now, I had read that. Oh, I think a year or so ago, there had been some uh, uh, several accidents out in the SM Seaside Mall area, and uh, so they they they've got a couple of speed speed guns, I guess, and they went out there and started checking speeds and I think out on the new bridge the CCLEX uh, Cebu Cordova or Cordova Cebu Link Expressway going going from uh, South Road property Cebu to over to uh, uh, Macan Island Cordova that uh, that they were checking speeds there but I've been over there a couple times I, I haven't seen anybody with speed guns and basically for the most part I don't think uh, I, I don't think there's any enforcement of those kind of things. Now I have talked to a couple of foreigners. I've got a friend who's had a couple citations, one for doing a U-turn where there's not supposed to do a U-turn, uh, and yet people do it all day long right there because there's no left turn. So people make a right turn, go down a little ways, make a U-turn, but he happened to do it right in front of uh, <laughs> right in front of some traffic enforcers that were standing on the street. Another foreigner from North Dakota. I won't mention Gary's name. I think a couple years ago he was he was saying he got a citation. I forgot what it was, and he said the uh, the officer said, "Well, you can take care of this fine right here if you don't want to go down to City Hall." And uh, he said, "No, I'll I'll go ahead and, and and go down to City Hall and take care of it properly." So those types of things still happen out here. Going over to the bridge. And I'm not quite sure where Lillowan Town starts, but I think it's once we get past this bridge a little ways. Now here again, please, if you have experience uh, renting vehicles or driving motorbikes or four-wheel vehicles in other uh, islands and provinces and cities, uh, please uh, make, make comments. Let us know what it's like there. I suspect in certain parts of Manila, and I've heard so many bad, uh, bad stories about driving and the heavy traffic and congestion and how long it takes to get anywhere in, in, in Manila. Um, not sure if that's all over Manila. Uh, Manila area, uh, metropolitan area, consists of many, many, many cities, and you've got... They're building uh, new freeways, and uh, I think they've started a subway system there. We've got railway systems here that we do not have here in Cebu province at all. We have a lot of two-lane roads here is what we have, which creates problem. Slowly they're expanding. There are certain areas down south, up north, where they've widened the road a little bit, and even you'll have four-lane road for, for short distances, uh, even like here. But what, what happens is... Uh, oftentimes, just like this, you find somebody parked in that in that extra lane there, so it, it is hardly usable. I read a, I read an article the other day. It said Cebu City has a I think it was Cebu City, Mandoy City. Not sure of the full extent of it. We have one of the most advanced traffic light systems in Southeast Asia or Asia. And um, read a little bit through there, and uh, my experience here has been lights are very, very, very long. You know, the red light's very long, green light. And apparently they've recently changed that system a little bit, and uh, 
it's it's not what you'd call a timed system where if you hit a if you hit a green light one green light and you maintain the the speed limit you'll hit the next green light the next green light well number two number number one we we don't have a lot of lights but there are certain places like on a main road like this back in the city uh, they have added a number of lights uh, but I think the new system uh, they either have they either have sensors in the ground and or they go by uh, by cameras traffic cameras and depending on how much traffic is traveling a certain direction they will change how long the lights are I think because I've noticed some of the lights are uh, shorter they're not they're not red light as long as they used to be so we'll just have to wait and see how that all pans out how is driving different here well my first impression um, is is that there's a whole lot of honking going on and uh, unlike in the US you know if somebody honks at you it means they're mad generally or trying uh, here they're trying to get your attention if, if they're passing and you can see people pass on the right and the left and uh, they share lanes and uh, there's a lot of honking and it usually means hey I'm coming up beside you um, it could mean if you're it, it could mean they're honking at uh, a taxi honking at somebody on the side of the street do you want to ride can be the guy is honking at another taxi driver that he knows uh, there's a whole lot of honking going on my observation here in Cebu City metropolitan area is it seems like less honking uh, since the economy opened back up I, I don't know if people forgot about how to honk but I know I've been in taxis and and they're just honking randomly there's no reason they're just so used to honking at everything um, anyway so a lot of honking don't don't take that as uh, aggression it is usually just saying hey I'm over here on your left I'm over here on your right one of the problem was with, with that is that there's so much honking is that uh, on this trip you, you'd hear a horn and you didn't know uh, from behind you you didn't know if it was on your right or your left so you really don't want to make any quick moves until you check your mirrors twice because they might be on your right this second and on your left the next second a lot of these vehicles do not are not traveling very far uh, they're they, they've got a very small radius that they travel in in their in their neighborhood basically and the town that they shop in uh, so they might pass you and make a hit their brakes and make a right turn make a left turn uh, a lot of u-turns you know in in the u.s most cities and most areas they've got laws against u-turns you can't do a u-turn here and you'll get a ticket you'll get a citation because we have a lot more traffic enforcers you've got state police you've got local police um, so there's we, we there there's a lot more tickets and citations uh, observations cameras in the u.s various parts of the world i guess there are more traffic cameras here and uh, i think mandawi started that a couple years ago and they were starting to send out citations to people whoever owned the vehicle if they went through a red light uh, they would get a citation and then uh, if somebody else was driving the vehicle tough luck you own the vehicle so you get the ticket they do drive on the right side of the road here now in, in the united states generally not 100 percent generally slower traffic is supposed to keep to the right not so here in fact there's there's a number of bridges number of highway ways where i've seen the, the sign heavier traffic heavy trucks stay to the left um so you'll you'll get those types of differences there are motorbike lanes starting to show up a few places uh they put bicycle lane that they they've taken you've got you've got three or four lanes and they've taken because during the lockdowns more and more people didn't have any there was no public transportation no buses no jeepneys and people started buying bicycles to get to work those who were fortunate enough to still have a job anyway and so they started putting uh bike lanes in and the bike lanes are you know as it was there 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 wasn't enough room for the traffic out on the roads and now they've taken a big chunk of that and made it into a bicycle lane well 
for the most part, people just make things work here. And uh, regular traffic would use the bike lanes unless they had them blocked off in some way. And e even recently, they've talked about allowing motorbikes to use bike, bike lanes in certain areas. Well, the reality is they, they often do anyway, and including using the sidewalks. What if you break down? I think this is a very important question. I really ask those of you out there who have know more about this than I do to please comment. Um, now, if you have a if you have a flat tire, you'll find that there are vulcanizers uh, various places along along the road in, in the cities and out in the country. Uh, you might have you might have ways to go to find one of them and. Vulcanizer basically is a guy that'll fix your flat tire. One thing I was really surprised when I came here is how few times I saw vehicles broke down on the side of the road. And part of the reason might be because they don't require all the pollution control equipment on vehicles here. And I've had the experience in, in the U.S. where nothing wrong with my car, but a sensor was bad and it shut my car down and all I needed was a new sensor. Another thing is, is that there again, most people are not traveling very far in their vehicles. They're traveling in their neighborhood. They're not like, like us in the US. Uh, we might tra travel 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 miles to work uh, every day. And uh, there's a lot of distance there that somebody can break down. And you can call a tow truck if you got AAA, some other type of uh, uh, auto, auto repair insurance. Does anybody know is that available uh, here in the Philippines? I'm, I'm not aware of that. Um, if Filipinos break down, they generally call their family, friends, and you'll see one vehicle with, a, uh, with some type of rope or something towing the other one if they can't fix it on the spot, if they can't get it going there. There are quite a number of repair shops. My guess is that getting parts is, is the main issue, um, especially with all the islands. Uh, repair shops aren't going to stock every, every part for every vehicle out here. Toyota, I think, is the number one vehicle sold here. Honda, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, the top three, I believe, top three motorbike companies. I think, uh, let's see, cars, uh, Honda, or it's a Toyota, Toyota maybe, Toyota, Honda, and Hyundai. Uh, I'm not sure though the, all the rankings of them, but we've got just a huge number of. Ford is here, number of other cars as well. It is very rare that I see a tow truck, although I have seen tow trucks. Very very rare, um, regular tow truck. And the type that where they pull your vehicle up on a, a flatbed, but been very very rare. So Filipinos kind of take care of their own families, I guess. I suspect the larger rental companies have have some kind of uh, service to get somebody out. And uh, if your car breaks down, your rental car. One of the problems if you go through the smaller local rental car agencies. Uh, do they offer those services? Do they offer the insurance? Do they offer the, uh, if you break down? And that's one of my questions when I have rented a motorbike in the past. What if it What if it breaks down? What if I'm halfway around the whole island and it breaks down? And not because of anything I've done. And that's always a big question. Oh, well, that's never happened before. The answer I've gotten a couple of times, that's never happened before. <laughs> that's not my question. What if it happens? Uh, how do you deal with it? You know, it, am I required to get it hauled back to your place? Uh, you're going to come and get it, bring me a replacement? That's never happened before, sir. <laughs> well, chances are it's going to happen to me. We rented a motorbike over on, in fact, uh, Bantayan Island. Rented a motorbike from a guy, just a private, private guy. And... Uh, I asked him that question, didn't get any answer, but we got up to the north end of the whole island and it wouldn't start. Uh, electric start wouldn't start. Fortunately, it had a kick start. Now, most bikes these days don't have kick starts anymore. 
So if the electric starter doesn't work, uh, you can try to push start it, put it in, put it in maybe second gear and push it, and try to get it started that way. But you can't put it up on its kickstand, uh, so the back wheels off and, and do a kickstart to start it. Well, I was able to. I fortunately I remembered, and fortunately it had a kickstart. And after several attempts, I was able to start it again. Got us back to the south end Santa Fe and the uh, southern end of of uh, Bantayan Island and I we tried to call the guy of course he wouldn't answer his phone because he probably knew what the problem was he didn't want to deal with it you can see off to the right you know they're they're widening the road there the problem is that turns into a parking lane and it isn't really a it isn't it really a lane that you can use uh, full time but it's better than what it was it's better than what it was you know uh, having Having just two lanes and having uh, the trucks and other vehicles parked in part of those two lanes, uh, <laughs> not a good deal. A couple other things you'll find uh, you, very rare that you see uh, very uh, very much power in these vehicles. A lot of these, a lot of these uh, little multi cabs and stuff. They've got very very small engines, very little power, and <coughs> excuse me. Even going up to the hill, up up into the mountains, up to what they call tops, and some of the restaurants up there, um, went with a friend up there, uh, John and John and Cindy. They're they're back in Phoenix, Arizona now, but they had a multi cab, and man, I thought we were going to get out, have to get out and, and, and push that thing up the hill. So if you're renting a vehicle or buying a vehicle, and and you're going to be hauling uh, freight and or a lot of people around in the mountains, you might. Think about the horsepower that you're going to get. And very few what they call automatic transmissions here. Almost everything is manual stick shift. I have probably missed quite a few items in my discussion about driving here in the Philippines. Really looking forward to the comments. And I suggest you all read through some of the comments and even come back in, 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 in a few days and read more comments about uh, various people's experiences here. How much to rent a vehicle and a driver, whether that's a, a taxi for the day or a larger van, if you want to carry uh, quite a few people someplace or freight someplace. Um, my experience in Cebu City is, is that, and it, it, it will vary, but, um, and sometimes you can negotiate. Uh, going going north from Cebu City, which is about halfway. Uh, Cebu is a relatively long, narrow island, and uh, Cebu City is about halfway in the middle. And uh, to go to go up north to Hagnia Port or Maya Port, over to Malapasqua or Bentayne Island up up there, um, often quoted about 3,500 pesos to take you up there. And, uh, you know, it's not that much. Uh, 3000 about $60, $60 for basically a four-hour trip. Not, not bad at all. You know, five miles in, in the U.S. Uh, would cost you that much, no doubt, with a taxi. Um, I've been quoted uh, 3000 for for a day from, let's say, for eight hours, eight in the morning till five in the afternoon or five or six. You can negotiate the time a little bit. Uh, to take you, take you around Cebu and up into the mountains and various places, just to hire the taxi driver for the day. Um, Three thousand, thirty-five hundred. Uh, many, many years ago, I had a guy. He must have really been a newbie. He, he said, "Oh, let, right now, let's go to let's go to Mole Bowl." Oh, and I quoted me eight hundred pesos. Well, that is way low ball. Uh, either he didn't know how far it was, uh, or something, or he was gonna. Once we got got over there, he was gonna say, uh, complain about how little he was making. But um, anyway, you can also get vans, and one 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 place to find that. Well, you can you can call rental companies. There are rental companies in the cities. Once you get out of the cities, in fact, over on Ubay North, uh, behold, we tried to rent a motorbike. When we were over there, nobody knew of anybody who would rent a motorbike. And usually you can rent a motorbike in the tourist areas for 400, 500, 
for a day or even less if you if you rent it for a week or something um, but the one guy said well I'll rent you my motorbike uh, for 1500 for for eight hours something like that and uh, what you got to be out of your mind well supply and demand nobody rents their motorbike out so I guess he can ask whatever he said well that's the rate here <laughs> nobody rents their motor and we never did find anybody that would rent it out now a number of people have asked me about vans if I want to rent a van and take uh, the girlfriend or family or her, her girlfriends and whatever someplace on a, on a, on a trip you can rent uh, I, su- I suggest you you call the hotels call call Radisson call a number of the uh, the Mandarin Mandarin in the quest uh, they all have contacts to uh, taxi drivers to uh, to the executive taxi drivers the bigger SUV types and to the larger vans and uh, they can put you in touch with the vans give you some ideas what it's going to cost and the fact that uh, you go through a hotel might give you more security than just flagging somebody down on the side of the road and and hiring them Um, you've got you've got some backup there anyway I would I guess um, a subscriber from New Zealand many years ago invited me along on a trip down south uh, through car car and up in the mountains he rented a van uh, he had bought the family a, a television and they brought a number of other supplies along and the driver and I think he said it cost about 8,000 pesos for the day for the van and that was all day taking us down there waiting for us taking us back again um, but uh, you know you might be able to negotiate some of the some of the fees that type of thing not sure that included the fuel and everything else but each area there again each island and each part of a province a city a town is going to have different options um, so you just need to ask ask around ask the locals like I said over on uh, the north end of, of, of the whole island up in Ubai we couldn't couldn't find a vehicle for them. Our options were buses, jeepneys, or tricycles. And a couple times we took a tricycle uh, about over 20 kilometers and uh, was 150 pesos each, about three three US dollars each. Uh, and you know, you're not traveling very fast. So you know, 20 kilometers, maybe uh, close to an hour to travel at. If you are the type that gets uptight if you are prone to road rage you probably don't want to drive in the Philippines because <laughs> they will do especially in the cities they will do things that you wouldn't believe anybody would do they'll be in the right right lane and make a left turn you turn right in front of you uh, just you know they'll 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 pass you and and put on their brakes because they're gonna make a left turn and, and you know it's two lane road you have no place to go except to stop and wait you're in a different country um you know i've i, I adapt fairly good and i and some people just you know they just shake their head i i had watched uh, a number of videos I, I i observed some of the driving some of the habits some of the culture and uh I, I accepted it for what it was, pretty much. Uh, there are times you get frustrated, but you know, take a deep breath. Take take a deep breath and uh, <laughs> close your eyes if you have to. Not if you're driving. Not if you're driving. Don't close your eyes. But uh, just understand, you're in a different country, different culture, and uh, Filipinos tend to be very tolerant. Even though I know I've, I've been in taxis where. They've, they've tried to squeeze the motorbikes out a little bit, but usually they make they make room. They let they let the motorbikes and other vehicles. There's if there's two lanes, you know they turn it into three lanes or four lanes, and uh, they they literally share the road here. And uh, you know there's a little bit of road rage. There there are accidents, but uh, I was surprised how few vehicles I saw with damage on them. I went around intentionally looking for damage. 
uh, because of the way people were driving, I thought, God, all these, all these vehicles must be dent to dent, and very seldom did I see that. Partly here in Cebu is because generally, as you can see, traffic is moving pretty slowly most of the time, and that's why you don't make very good time as well. It takes a long ways to go. It takes a couple hours to go. It takes an hour, oh, took over an hour and a half, I think an hour and 40 minutes to go 40 to 50 kilometers, you know, where should have taken 30 minutes. If we had a freeway system, or even a good two, 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 uh, four-lane road system. But I've driven a lot of the roads in uh, the western U.S. as well, and there are a lot of two-lane roads that I would take, and you're hitting a lot of little towns and having to slow down. And, uh, but there again, you've got a lot more law enforcement even out, out in those small towns, you've got uh, the highway patrol and the local local sheriffs and uh, stuff out there willing and able to give citations for for little infractions. But I do I do ins I do support law enforcement. Don't get me wrong; they've got a job to do. Well, I mentioned at the beginning I was going to mention uh, a little bit about weather, a little bit about my uh, recent medical experience, and uh, yeah, I, I just got back from the dermatologist. I went uh, one week ago. I had a biopsy on a little indentation, a real tiny indentation on the top of my head. And uh, I think I hit it on a kitchen cabinet like a year ago, and it's just been a little annoying little thing. It didn't hurt or anything, but just it's there. It just started bothering me, so I went. That and a couple other things I wanted a dermatologist to look at, see if there was any cancer involved. And anyway, I had a biopsy, and... Uh, found out today I went back and had some some things lasered off of me and when you get older things grow on you as my dermatologist in the US said so I had I thought it was just going to be two or three things but uh, after closer inspection um, it, there were there were a number of things uh, several quite small uh, that they lasered off and uh, just coming into Compostela from little low on into Com Compostela Anyway, uh, lasered them off, and what they did, they, they did a little uh, topical anesthesia to, to deaden the area, and then she gave me an injection of some uh, something to deaden, deaden it, and then they, uh, they lasered it off. And I was, uh, I was awake the whole time, and the, uh, some of it, there was a little bit of a stinging sensation, a little bit of burning flesh. Nothing like the smell of burning flesh. Even though uh, they, they usually had, a, I don't know, some kind of little air air vacuum thing to vacuum that you know, every once in a while, get a little little whiff of that burning flesh. Anyway, at, uh, I think the the visit cost me 500. I think taking the stitches out of the little where they did the biopsy cost me 500. I think, and then uh, the rest of it was. Each, each time they did a lasered something off, that was 500 pesos. So anyway, the bill came to 7,622, about 140 U.S. dollars. So anyway, they use, uh, they use lasers here to uh, burn, burn that off, I guess. In the U.S., my experience, uh, maybe nine years ago, I had three what they call maybe precancerous uh, frozen off with nitrogen they don't use nitrogen here it's expensive to make you know the air that you breathe is 78 percent nitrogen and uh, most of the rest of it is oxygen a few other gases a lot of dust depends on where you are uh, but they uh, you know they have to freeze that uh, take it down to I don't know 250 300 minus degrees uh, Fahrenheit something like that to freeze it make a liquid out of it anyway I had those three frozen off in the US and I think my bill even with pretty good insurance uh, from a dermatologist was was right around 400 500 dollars I think so pretty good deal my experience and uh, and my research is showing that a doctor's visit consultation uh, even with a specialist, mine uh, has ranged anywhere from 350, that was many, many years ago, uh, 800 pesos tops, 500 is, you know, 500 pesos, about 10 U.S. dollars. 
uh, would be pretty common, or you know, four or five, six hundred dollars would be much more uh, common. Depends on what part of the Philippines you're in. Now, as far as weather is concerned, we're just about ready to go from weather, one uh, climate system into a different weather system, uh, from northeast monsoon, what they call northeast monsoon, to southwest monsoon, which means the wind is, has been coming for many, many months, can basically from the north or northeast or east, and uh, a little, little bit cooler, and we're going to start getting a southwest wind from the southwest going to be warmer, generally clear skies, hotter temperatures. Uh, April, May is usually our hottest month here. And I took a walk to the to the doctor today and uh, more humid and hotter and I was sweating a little bit walking there and walking back. So in the coming week or two, it's a little uh, earlier than normal. Oh, don't use the word normal with weather. There's no such thing as normal weather. You can get averages. You can get averages over over years and decades and, and centuries and thousands of years. Uh, but weather is not normal. Uh, I've observed it since, since I was very, very, very young. Um, I've seen very cold winters, very snowy winters, very, uh, winters with very little snow. I've seen droughts. I've seen rainy seasons in the U.S. And I've seen it here, too. I've seen two rainy seasons that were a drought very little rain here in the Philippines so uh, you can come up with averages and uh, that's uh, weather and climate I've done done a num number of videos about weather and climate here in the Philippines anyway as soon as I find out uh, more about traveling to the Philippines if they're going to drop all the uh, right now uh, if you're not fully vaccinated uh, if you're unvaccinated uh, you need to get a negative antigen test before you fly or you can get it when you arrive here uh, if you wait till you arrive here to get it done you take the chance of it being a uh, false positive and having to go through a, probably a five-day quarantine something like that even though uh, the, the present variant is very 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 mild and this is uh, towards the end of March 2023 so keep that in mind at the present time, they st still have their e-travel system where you need to register, I think, uh, within 72 hours um, of your travel to the Philippines. You can register, and it's kind of a health declaration form you have to do online anyway. Anyway, I'm going to continue to run the rest of this uh, many, many minutes of this trip up there for those of you who want to watch that. And I think I've talked enough here. If, if there's anybody still listening at uh, about 48 minutes, anybody else, if anybody's still listening, <laughs> I will be surprised but uh, and, and very grateful and very grateful. And I'm just going to let, let it play out, let you watch the traffic. And anyway, thanks for watching. And I've got a lot more videos coming, planned. So uh, take care, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Enjoy the video.